Right, all day five. Good evening to all of you. I've literally got back from Kick How Are You, The Possible, and Up Up Goes. Uh, been back for about, I'll give about an hour and a half or so. Yeah. Decided that I'm finally going to do a vlog about the whole experience uh, before I go and get some kit. Got my, got my night fuel for me here, a bit of a NASA heat sleeper drive. Started this morning, uh, briefly met Alita and her husband outside the Hello Project stop because they were the second link in the chain for me getting tickets to this gig. Um, and my good friend Aroboros used his fan club uh, membership for Hello Project to order me concert tickets and then Alita was the shipping address to get them picked up. So thank you to the pair of you, I owe you a lot of gratitude and you're getting it now. And there's plenty more to come. Um, briefly talked about the gig. Uh, Alita and her husband were thinking of going, but they're not fans of up up girls. Um, it kind of ruined the experience for them. And Alita, I'm sorry you're jealous that I got to see Robin. I also got to meet her three times. Yeah, um, I, I understand if you're suddenly going to score a name off your address list for booking concert tickets in the future. I'd probably do the same thing, honest. Yeah, whatever. Right, so, um, after that, I well, I pretty much had the day to kill. I was hoping to um, see some people for lunch, but no one was available, as far as I knew. So, just hung out, played a bit of gaming in Arcade Ar 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 Bro, spoke to my girlfriend again. Missing you loads, babe, and I'll see you next week. It's going to be great. But first, I'm going to finish my trip to Japan. So, going back to what I was doing today, took it nice and smooth. Um, I was actually going to go and look to do some clothes shopping, but didn't find anything that I wanted. Um, so I thought instead, best thing to do, just focus on getting ready for the gig. Um, around at 4 o'clock, I arrived at Shinjuku Blaze. Now, this is one of the venues that's called a live house. In England, we refer to them as academies or clubs. Uh, basically, it's venues where it's all standing. Uh, there's no seating. Um, most J-pop concerts, particularly ones associated with Upfront, are held at venues where it's kind of like either small theatres or small dance halls. Sometimes it's big, very, very big clubs and venues, depending on the gig and depending which group it is. Uh, but for this one, it's one of their live house ones. The advantage of ones with seats in is that you get given an assigned row and number for your seat, and it means that you can go in, put your bag on the seat, and then have stand-up space, and you have loads of space to move around. Problem with it is... Um, it's very much the look of the draw depending on where you go. Unless you're going to use second-hand ticket resellers where you can really get yourself ripped off. I've seen people pay upwards of 50,000 yen, some even over 100,000 yen, for tickets on the first two rows. And they're not even guaranteed seats in the middle. So, if you're thinking of coming over for concerts for idol gigs, um, either seek out a fan club member to do it the lottery way, which will get you tickets at face value anywhere between 3800 I pay tonight and as high as maybe 65 depending on the gig you're going to. Or if you're going to use resellers, at least stick to the lower values because the lower value ones, you're more than likely going to get towards the centre. Even if you like, on say, the 20th row or further back, you'll still get a much better view. Because sometimes, I mean, I do know one person who got a ticket for a concert in the Tokyo Dome Hall. It was on the second row, yes, but it was miles to the left and half the view was scripted by cabs. As in, like, huge speaker cabs. You're not going to pay... Paying 50,000 yen for that, it's just not worth it. Um, so I, I'm not the only person who doesn't like resale shops. I hate them. Personally, I'd like nothing more than for, for up front to take a leaf out of AKB48's book. Yeah, I'm going to actually give praise to AKB48. Shock horror. I don't care about them. I don't like them, but I don't care about them. But there's one thing they do right. For their theatre shows, what you can... I think it's also do for the concerts as well. You can apply for special Gaijin tickets. And you have to give your passport number. And if you enter a lottery draw, if you're drawn, you'll get tickets really in a great position at regular price. I'd love to see the main groups, even if you don't take it to the front, even if it's literally, say at Nakano Sun Plaza, a 22-row venue, venue, if they put rows 20 to 22 of the first floor, or something like that, as first pick for those who apply for Gaijin tickets, and if they don't, if there's not enough applicants, and there's not enough people to enter, they can then sell them onto the general fans. You know, something like that to make it easier, because I do think that 
a lot of us put the effort of coming over here, and because of the nature of the system, a lot of people are willing to get ripped off, and you can get seriously ripped off. So, as I say, I'm not intending to rant about that today, but I thought I might as well cover it, because I've talked about how Japan can not be a place to get ripped off if you know what you're doing. That's one of the ways they do take advantage of Western fans. And I'm not saying it's, the, it's not the companies who put the music out, it's these scalpers and touts, as we know them in the UK, who can command top dollar because they got the tickets. You see it for all gigs all around the world. How many people are going to be paying upwards of £1,000 plus to go and see the Monty Python reunion show in London? There'll be loads who are stupid enough to do it. I'm not one of them. As much as I love Monty Python, I'm not doing that. And again, the same. I'd advise anyone here, it's not worth the cost in my opinion. We're getting back to the gig itself. Because it's the live house, you literally are given a ticket number on your ticket. And what they do at the venue, for the lower numbers, they call it number by number. So it's like, it's... Ni. Sam. And then when you get to the likes of 30, they'll start saying from 30 to 35. And then when it's towards the hundreds, they're like 90 to 100 and so forth. Now, Mark, Ouroboros, um, he booked tickets through the fan club for his own gigs when he was here last year. And he got front and second rows. So first and second rows. Really good tickets. The look he used on those has not transpired to me this time. Uh, for the Shinjuku gig tonight, I was at ticket number 397, which is pretty much back of the pile. Uh, for Osaka, I've got 154. Not brilliant, but it'll still get me a decent place. And to be fair, even though tonight I, start, I was near 400th, I still ended up on the seventh row, purely because people didn't want to go as far forward sometimes. Sometimes crew do that. So, you know, it's like, sometimes it's not as important to have the most immediately forward seat but either way it works out tonight so hopefully the same thing will happen in the Kansai regions in two days from now um when i got to the venue um they did have a merch queue it was at four o'clock um before i talk about the merch i'll talk about the venue itself um on google maps it tells you to leave shinjuku station by the east exit and then kind of like circle around it uh, to the seibu shinjuku area where there's a 7-eleven store and you turn right, and then there's a sunken store, and you turn left, and you carry on walking, you're there. <laughs> well, I followed that, because I thought, well, it's easy enough directions. You know, it's, it, I'll, I'll, I'll play it safe, I'll take the easy way through. I get there, this venue is right next to a gigantic cinema. I'm talking a huge cinema with a massive bowling alley. You've got bowling balls and bowling pins all over the side of the world. You can't miss it. And afterwards, I thought, okay, well, I'll remember that for the future. And it turns out that if you then walk left, you're actually on the main aisle, where when you come out of the east exit at the Shinjuku Station, if you literally cross over, walk past a few stores, you end up seeing like a huge traditional red arch. If you go through that, pass a couple of blocks and turn left, you're there. So anyone who's going to Shinjuku Blaze, it's much easier to find that way than taking the circumnavigated approach. And that's my two pence. Well, at four o'clock, join the merchandise queue. And I got some of the merchandise, so this is the first of it. This is a t-shirt for all three members, because the ones for Kikar were all size M. Not a chance of fitting me. This is an XL, and I actually think this design is one of the best designs for a t-shirt they've ever done. As you can see, in the middle here, you've got the names of the groups. So you've got, like, um, Yukikawa, The Possible, and then Up Up Girls. And around them, all as anime characters, like Kikas here, and then you've got it's a couple of the a couple of the girls from Up Up Girls. There's a samurai here. The possible with the balls here, and then at the bottom a mixture of all three. Uh, well, the other two because Kikas at the top on their own. And the idea behind it is that the smoke from the cartoon fight is creating their name. You know, whenever you watch those TV shows where you see like four characters suddenly get everything, it suddenly turns into like a big cloud of smoke, and the arms are coming up from all over the bloody place. That's what this design is. It's fantastic. And it's also really nice quality too. I've said before so many times, the best shirts can sometimes be the simplest. This is such a simple concept applied to a brilliant design. Please do more of this for all the groups. This is the kind of shirt that people want to say I was there for. That's an excellent souvenir t-shirt. As well as that, I've um, got a few photo cards. A couple of two L's firstly. Four to be precise. Nice professional shot one for Kika. Now these ones have got a bit of a problem with them. If you actually look carefully at them, you can see where there's a bit of shading here. Now, they're not overexposed when sold. I think what's happened is when I was coming home and I had my Kingblade glow stick in my bag, I think it switched itself on and that might have discolored it. 
and I get the feeling that's what's happened. It's not that bad. It's not something that's so someone all thrown away, but I can't say I'm impressed. So what I'll be doing is probably picking up a fresh batch, fresh batch in Osaka, providing they aren't like that from the start. If they are, that's a rip-off. That'll be a massive penalty after scoring great points with those, that's to be said. Also, I got myself some single-sized owls. I've got one of these books from the 100 yen store. They're absolutely fantastic because, check this out, they fit two owls perfectly. So they're only 105 yen. They are so cheap, well worth picking up. If you're someone who collects this simple standard owl photo cards, best buy you'll ever make. Absolutely wonderful. But enough of that, let's go on to the pictures themselves. So first of all, got these two. Then... Not these two. I'm trying to angle it so you don't see the lens. Unfortunately, the lens is capturing it. Focus on the top one. That's, that's what I can get away with, I think. And then you've got that one on the left, which is upright. And then I'm going to have to flip through 180 degrees. There we go. For the second one. And then finally, we've got these ones. As well. Bit of a brief shot of some old Hashimon photos that I've got there as well. But not from the console. I've got them from Trio. Um, on the whole, I'm impressed with the merchandise. Um, there is one final piece which I haven't showed you, and it's the microfiber towel. Now, due to the length of this, I'm going to be careful because I've got a beer right next to my computer. I don't want to be spilling it because I've normally been cleaning my floor all night, so I'm going to move it very slowly across. Now I'm blind, so I don't know if you're seeing the whole outfit here. I do apologise. And that is it. It's kind of like a collection of her in multiple different ways. I don't know if it's meant to be a reversible towel or some kind of play, some kind of psychedelic imagery. Whatever it is, I like it. <laughs> so that's all that matters. So I'll get a hung on my wall when I get home alongside the other Yukikao towel I have. Um, as a reward for all these, I did get to go for handshakes. Now, initially I got there and I got given free tickets for Kika because it was all, all Kika merchandise. So the clerk immediately just gave me free tickets for Yukikawa. Uh, afterwards, she realised I qualified for more. And she started saying to me, push your bow up, up Gozu. And I said, Kika. <laughs> be, be a typical die, die, stupid foreign fan. I'm like, no. Uh -uh, no, no. Her. I then clocked on what she was getting at. You're only allowed three of each. So she went Sankai. And then I went, of course, three times, fine. Um, I do like the possible a lot. So I thought, right, well, I can't go for three meetings with Kika, four, six meetings with Kika. I'll get three with the possible as well. So that's really nice. Because I've never got the chance. Last chart year, technically I could have met them if I'd have had more money with me when I went to Oku with Sudani. But I didn't. So I missed out that time. So it's great recompense for me to finally tick that off. Um, I went in and I met, went, off, went off for Kika first, naturally, because she's my Oshin Hall of J-pop. Um, probably the whole of pop music, I'll think about it. Uh, basically, uh, first time round, I, I said to her, you know, uh, it's really nice to see you again. I love you, basically. And she's like, ah, oh, thank you. You know, what, what else can you say, really? Uh, second time around, I mentioned that I was going to be seeing, I'm going to go to Osaka, but I'm really looking forward to the concert. And I said something along those lines, I'd probably flop my lines a bit, because I didn't prepare these, because I wasn't aware to be handshake, so I should have thought about it. Finally, for the third one, I said that I want to go and see her in Brazil because she's doing an anime weekend in, I think it's in Sao Paulo. Chances are I won't go, though, because it's very expensive to get to Brazil. And more importantly, it's the year of the Football World Cup. I want to avoid Brazil out the plague while they're getting ready for that. Anything could happen. Um, anyway, once those three were done, I went to um, talk to the possible. And I had a bit more time to... Because I thought then, so well, I've already talked to Kika, what more do I say to these people? So the first one I did was the obvious one, which is say to any um, idol group or idol I meet for the first time, I've come from England. Thank you. And I said that to all five members, aside from Aina Hashimoto, a.k.a. Hashimon. As she's my favourite, I told her she was my favourite as well. So on top of that, um, that made a day. They, they were all, like, Susan were blown away by the fact that I said I come from England. Second time around, um, I was thinking it was because I wanted to end by saying that I was going back on Sunday. So this is my last chance to sit, pretty much my last chance to see them. So for the second time, I was stuck as to what to say until I remembered the Ugui Sedani gig. So I thought, I'll mention that I, was, I saw them there. So I said, I've seen you before. I saw you at Woodstock Party. I still find it strange that I went to an idol pop music venue at night called Woodstock. That's just bizarre. Um, so they were all like, all amazed. They were like, oh, of course, wow, that's really cool. And all that kind of thing. And when I mentioned it to Akiyama Eureka, who was in the middle of the group, I noticed that as soon as she started kind of like doing this. Now, 
if you've not run from my blog, um, which is allforyou.blogspot.com, I'll put a link in the video description, um, I have an entry called A Voyage to Woodstock, where I talk about this group called Seishun Gakushin, who were on the bill, along with Kika and the Possible. And it was one of the strangest concerts I've ever seen. I will spoil the blog entry, but the main thing was there was a weird dance where the crowd formed a circle, holding hands and started like leaning forwards and backwards. So as soon as I mentioned Seishun Gakushin, she like, kind of started doing it, and that's so why I joined in for about two seconds. Well, staff are like, move it kind of thing. But she was giggling quite furiously. Um, I also noticed a bit more of God So Yuki this time. Normally, I don't find her that great, to be honest. The vocals aren't special. And for some reason, whenever they take official photos of her, they always manage to be very unflattering. It almost looks like she's trying to be made to look like a guy. I don't know why, because her features don't seem to match it, but it always seems to be that she is made to look like a man for some reason. So I've never really paid her much attention, but tonight, she was not only a lot cuter, but she was very, very happy to see me. She was really infectious in her enthusiasm, so that was really, really nice to see. One I've overlooked who's a bit bad in the thought. Who, who, who could have doubted it? So I'll keep an eye out for her in future releases to see how she looks because she seems pretty cool to me. Uh, final time around, I said that I was going back to England, but I'm also going to be seeing them in Osaka. So that got them really hyped up for it. So that made things really, really cool. Um, after this, we had like about an hour before it started. So I just went and got changed. Um, I didn't wear this gig. I actually wore my Kikawa Ufanda shirt. And also, I've got my yellow trousers. I've currently got them on, but you can't see them as a stand-up. Uh, so I wore those as well, all yellow. A lot of the fans found that really, really either cool or very disturbing. I'm not sure <laughs> I'm not sure which side of the defence they all fell on, to be honest. Uh, but after that, I went inside, and it started in a very odd way. It started with them all doing an MC together, chatting on stage. And I was bewildered. I was like, um, okay. I was expecting, like, a group song, like the like the cool hello concerts I went to, but no, they came once did, did, did an MC, because of course that was the weird thing, so the handshakes happened before the concert, which I've never heard of, I've never heard of that before, normally it's the reward for going to the gig is to get the handshake, <laughs> not get the handshake and the reward is the gig, so it's a bit unusual that, but it was still really, really cool. Um, going back to the concert, they did like this MC, talked about them all being together and all about how they're aiming to win, it's a versus, I suppose it technically means they've got to try and win. Uh, and then afterwards, there was a brief game of Jenkin Pion, um, or uh, Paper, Rock, Scissors, for those of you who don't know the name of it. And it was between Kika, Goto Yuki from The Possible, and Saho Akari from Up Up Girls. Uh, Saho was the first one eliminated, but then Kika got beat by Goto. So she's like, yay, first, first strike to The Possible kind of thing, which got me laughing. It was quite funny. Um, afterwards, the gig, I was wondering how it would be, because when I went to Call Hello, and then a lot of the groups where they cross over, they usually do it where it's like, one of them perform, they do perform some of the stuff, usually the new material, and then you'll get periods where they'll dip in and out, you know, between each one. You might get crossovers of the units, you might get them doing cover songs from other idol groups and so forth. Um, but this one, it was done in blocks, and it started with Kika performing first. That quite annoyed me, because... I mean, I know the possible of well, I saw them, but up girls certainly haven't, to my knowledge. But the fact is, you know, she was on first. Uh, it confused me how she started, because the music when she came on to was Ignition from her first album, and that's the intro for the album. And then it normally goes straight into the song Kono Atashi de Yokatara. But she didn't do that song, she did instead Koko Kara Hajimarunda. That confused me quite a lot. She also did um, Happy Rappy Sunrise, which is one of my favourite songs by her, so that immediately got me going get quite giddy. I think she also covered Cute's Midnight Temptation, because she did mention the word temptation before doing a song that I didn't recognise. And she's never, definitely not got a song with that anywhere, to my knowledge. Unless it's a new track. I really don't know. It was pretty cool either way. It was a really good performance. Um, she also did the song Sweetie. Uh, she also did... Uh, ooh. Well, she ended with Kut Zutu Zutu Kimi Da Skida, but there was another track she played, I'm sure of it. Oh, yeah, I think she actually played Kono Atashi de Yokatara. I think that, that was it, yeah, halfway through, so that was even more confusing. After she went off stage, um, Up Up Girls came on. Now, I've been mentioned that they are not very good live. I saw them once at Idol Nation, and I, didn't, I couldn't really judge them because they only saw three songs. And it's not really fair to say a band's crap or good based off three songs, it's just not fair at all. Well, I've been told that when they sing, they pretty much blast the vocals out loud and shout it. Having watched it, I agree. 
and the songs, I didn't take to them because the music wasn't that interesting to me. And but yet the crowd loved them. There was loads of chanting, there was loads of shouting and everything. And it didn't hit me. Up Up Girls are pretty much J-pop's version of American hardcore bands. Now before you all want to shoot me, allow me to explain it. Basically, if you get bands like Hatebreed, bands like... Um, trying to think who, who else would fit in the mould, really. Uh, bands like Agnostic From. Um, the fans of those music... The, the, the fans of that music, should I say. I don't know of any personally who listen to that music religiously. A lot of it's about the live shows. They'll check out the new albums and the new singles. And they'll get an affinity for it. But they don't go to the show to watch those songs played live, to like marvel at the guitar play. They go for the mosh pits, the slam pits, the wall of dust, the circle pits, and so forth. And that's the feeling I get from watching Up Up Girls. The songs don't seem to stand out that much, but the girls' energy and everything else seems to work at getting the crowd going to make moves going. So it's almost similar to American hardcore bands. I personally only start doing the big interaction if I really take to the music and I take to the group. I really didn't take to Up Up Girls, despite how much the fact that I like Morisaki. I think she's really cool and really cute. The point is, I didn't feel they were very good. Part of the problem is the vocals were, as I've been advised, really poor, and that shocked me. Because in the group, not only have you got Sahawakari, but you've also got Sakina Zuza. When they were in the Hello Pro X, they were very, very good. Like, Sahawakari did a great job with R, even though it wasn't really R, because Raina wasn't in the group. But she did a, for what she had to do, she did a good job. And Saki Nazuza also duetted with Yukikawa on that famous cover of Romantic Kakara Mode by Miki Fujimoto, which was absolutely fabulous. One of the best renditions of a song I've ever seen. So it really shocked me that they just didn't seem to have it at all. And I don't know if it's because they've been coached to go that way, or if the music means that they can't display all the talents. I really don't know. Uh, but either way, they were fun to watch. I don't really know much of their song, to be fair, so I can't judge them too much. I remember Samurai Girls, and um, I think that's about it, to be honest. I don't really remember much else about them. They weren't bad, uh, but I think they'd have been better as the opener to get the crowd fired up and then everyone else goes forward. And who knows, it might be a rotating bill, so in Osaka, they might be the opener, I don't know. Uh, following as possible came on, um, opened with, um, I think it's called Seishun Summit My Victory. It's a song where they're on the airstrip, basically, they're doing the huge trampoline drums. Great opener, really got the crowd going, everyone was bouncing up and down for it. But then the rest of the concert was strange for the possible. I've got both of their original albums, and I've also heard that before they became permanent as the possible, like an early best best EP kind of thing with some songs that have never made, never made it to record after that they didn't play any of them or if they did they didn't, didn't recognise them they didn't seem to play any of them instead they played a lot of the songs that I think are part of the multiple release that's coming out they did the song Yuki Super Bowl which is the next one and did a brilliant crowd interaction where they had like frisbees made of foam shaped like balls and were just throwing them into the crowd that was actually really, really cool. Um, they also did, um, well, they didn't do it themselves, but in the part, of, part of a crossover encore, they also did the song Nasty. Um, and a lot of the other songs, I didn't really recognise them, but they were good. And that, to me, is all that matters. The music's good. It doesn't matter if I know it or not. If the music's great, the music's great. Um, also, there's one point where Akian and Hashimon did some very, very good fan service. I'm not going to complain. Not at all. Um, there also was one moment where the possible actually asked the crowd a question. Now, at first, I didn't quite catch it because there was only a few hands went up. And it, I think it said Tokyo, Tokyo Kimada or something like that. And I thought, was that something about coming to Tokyo? And it was only when I saw how few hands went up and the first answer was read out by the girls, I realised what they'd asked. They asked who's come from outside Tokyo to this gig. So one member had said, the punk crowd member said they come from Nagoya, which is quite a track. Another one had come from Kyoto. That's a big track. That's like nearly, even if you go on the fastest Shinkansen, that's about two hours plus. And then, after that point, I thought, okay, here we go. And I held up my glow stick, not expecting much. But Robin actually saw me and went, go on. So I just shouted Igirisu, which is Britain in Japanese. And uh, they were, whoa! And the crowd were all like, uh? <laughs> kind of thing. It was like, I guess that they thought I was just a person who lived and worked in Japan, but was obviously a guy gym. Um, only a few people I know, um, such as um, Kika2525 and Emu, 
and Nanashima, that they knew I actually come to come from England to Japan to watch the concerts. They know that from knowing me personally. But a lot of the crowd, because again, you know, at these big events, there's not much going on. Unless you're someone who really wants to make friends, you stick with the people you know and you get into the concert. So that's why not a few of them probably didn't speak to me that much. And I'm not, I'm not got a problem with that. At the end of the day, I'm not, I'm not an attention whore. I don't want to be the guy everyone comes and harasses all the time. No one wants to be waste. No one wants to be spending two hours answering twenty questions a million times. So I'm fine if they don't want to talk to me before the concert. But yeah, they certainly seem to catch me. They certainly seem to realise I got their attention after that one. So that was pretty special. Um, uh, after this, after the show finished for them, they then did the, the crossover encore. It started with Kika Robin from Possible and Saho Kari from Upper Girls doing a rendition of Darling Tomadonna, a Kyuki Kawa song, as a trio. It almost worked, but Saho Kari let the team down. Um, Kika's obviously Kika. She can nail that song in a sleep. She's done it that much now. Robin, meanwhile, really impressed me because like, she's someone who's got like a very open, genki character and she can hit decent notes but I don't think she's on the same vocal level as Kika is in fact there's not many I believe are but she did an excellent job really well done but Saho was far too squeaky and far too nasally and again going back to what I said before I really don't know I'm at a loss as to explain why because I know she's done a hell of a lot better in the past um, and what was annoying with that as well she could get in all the lines where normally we do the chant for Kika so because the Up Up Girls fans are there, they were all chanting for Akari, just because they're Up Up Girls fans. So it was a really bewildering experience in many ways, but it wasn't bad, but it's just a shame that it wasn't done as either a duet with Kika and Robin, or maybe if they got another member of the possible, like Akiyan or Hashiman, to join them instead. But beggars can't be choosers. Um, after that, Robin stayed on stage, got joined by Hashiman, and I think it was Goto from The Possible, and then more members of Upper Girls, which I think one of them was Ayano, I think, and one of them might have been, Sen might have been Sengoku. I, I don't really know all the members, to be honest, of um, Upper Girls, I'll be really, really honest. And um, they did a version of Nasty, which I talked about previously. That worked really well, actually. Despite the lack of vocal quality, clarity from the members of Upper Girls, it still was very, very enjoyable. Then finally, Kika came back on with the rest of the Hubbard girls, did some song which I don't recognise, no idea what it was. It was good fun. Um, Kika shone as well as normal. Then there was the final thing that they did, which was a crossover MC, where they were like, trying to decide a name for themselves, and one of them was um, Tamago Club. <laughs> so just by Koso Yuki, because of course they were all ex Hello Pro X, but they didn't go with that in the end. Um, and there's a couple more that I can't remember. Um, Tamago Club was not the one that won, so. I honestly can't remember what they called themselves. They did one final song together, which I didn't recognise, but again, worked well. And that was it, concert over. So I really, really enjoyed myself. And it was, um, it's been cool to get some more merchandise, because these groups, it's not easy to get merchandise for. It's as simple as that. Um, you can sometimes get them in trio secondhand. Um, when I went in this week, all of Yuka Cows was sold out. There was nothing. But there was The Possible, there was The Book Girls, uh, but it's all photo cards mainly. You know, posters from t-shirts, anything like that, good luck, they're really hard to find. And I think that's one of the things about being a foreign fan of the more indie idol groups, because I don't want to call them an indie idol because they're not really. They're still part of Upfront Umbrella, and people might even argue they're still part of Hello Project, but they're not. Um, as I say, I mean, this is the first time I've come to Japan where I've not actually done any Hello Project concerts or events. I've done none. It's all been, you know, Akihabara Backstage Pass, possible kick up girls, and that's it. I've not done the whole project stuff. It's not because I've not had any interest. I don't, don't think there's any on. Uh, it's just it's just strange that I've come here and it's been all for the other idols, but it's been a nice experience. And I'm looking forward to going to Osaka. Now, tomorrow I'm meeting up with friends and we're going to go to the park slash theme park, uh, a place called Kasairin Kaikoen, which is where Kika went on a huge Ferris wheel on television. I've always wanted to go and visit it, so that's my plan for tomorrow. And I'm also going to meet Ricardo, who I've not seen since Atlanta 2012, because mainly he's been in America and I've not. So I'm going to catch up with him a couple of days before I go home. Very, very busy man. Until next time.